In this video, I'm going to talk about multi-tape Turing machines. I'm going to show how a Turing machine with multiple tapes is no more powerful than a Turing machine with a single tape. This is particularly useful because multi-tape Turing machines are a bit easier to program and more useful for some tasks. Here is the main result. Every multi-tape Turing machine has an equivalent single tape Turing machine. By equivalent, I mean that it decides or recognizes the same languages. So it's not about speed, efficiency, or ease of programming. It's just about whether the class of languages that can be recognized is different. And the answer is no. Having a Turing machine that can operate on several tapes at once gives us no more additional power. It may give us more speed, fewer steps of computation, but it doesn't change the number of languages or the kinds of languages that we can decide or that we can recognize. Here's the main idea of the proof. It's pretty straightforward, but the devil is in the details. Given a multi-tape Turing machine, we're going to show how to build an equivalent single-tape Turing machine. In other words, given a Turing machine that takes multiple tapes, uh, and we're going to show how you can create a new Turing machine that does exactly the same task using only a single tape. The trick is that we need to store all of the tapes on a single tape in our single tape Turing machine, we've only got one tape, so we have to show the data representation we're going to use. We're going to sh need to show how we're going to store all these tapes on one tape. Um, each tape in the multi-tape machine will have its own tape head, so at any point in the computation of the multi-tape Turing machine, each head is in a different position. So we also have to store that information and we also need to show how a move in a multi-tape Turing machine can be done in a one or more moves on the single tape Turing machine. So again what we're doing is showing that if you give me a multi-tape Turing machine I can turn it into a single tape Turing machine or I can create and build a single tape Turing machine that will do the exact same thing. First, let's be a little bit more careful about how we're defining this multi-tape Turing machine. Uh, the way we define Turing machines uh, does not permit a second tape. So this is a, a, a different definition of Turing machines, and in this case, we're allowed to have uh, several different tapes. So this is a Turing machine with three tapes, and each tape has its own tape head. Okay. Uh, each uh, tape is different, uh, each is infinite in one direction, and each has its own head. Now what do the moves look like in this enhanced version of Turing machines? Well, instead of looking at just one symbol, we're now looking at three symbols. Let's call this tape 1, this tape 2, and this tape 3. So if, for example, we're in some state, such as Q, and we're looking at a B on tape 1, a 1 on tape 2, and an X on tape 3, then we're allowed to take this transition. And what are we going to do? We're going to overwrite the B with a B, in other words we're not going to modify it, and we're going to move left, so this head will move left. We're going to overwrite the 1 with a 0, and this head will also move left. And finally we're going to overwrite the X with a Y and this head is going to move right. So we'll overwrite that X with a Y and move to the right. So it's a very similar kind of definition for Turing machines, but we now have three tapes in this example. Now our goal is to show how to build a Turing machine with only one tape to simulate it. Okay, so here down below is our Turing machine for this simulation. We are only given one tape, and on it we're going to represent all three of these tapes. While these tapes are infinite, only a finite portion of these tapes is non-blank. And so we only have to worry about the non-blank portion. 
and we can add blanks when we need to. So what we're going to do is introduce a couple of extra symbols above and beyond what the multi-tape machine used. We're going to introduce a pound sign and also the symbols necessary to allow us to mark individual symbols on the various tapes. So we see we've got this marked and that cell marked and that cell marked. And these marks are used to show where the tape head is. B, 1, and X. The tape head is on B, 1, and X on tape 1, tape 2, and tape 3. So at any step of the computation, this is how we're representing the state of the multi-tape machine. So we're going to add dots to show where each individual tape head is. And to simulate a transition from some state Q in our multi-tape machine, we have to scan our tape to figure out where the tape heads are and what symbols are underneath the various tape heads. That's going to be kind of complicated. But once we determine this, we're ready to make the transition, if you will, in the multi-tape machine. And then again, we must scan across the tape again to update the cells and um, move the dots. So in this case, if we determine that we can take this transition, then our single tape Turing machine is going to have to do a bunch of work. It's going to have to, well, we're going to update the B with a B, so it's going to have to do that, which is not no work. We update the 1 with a 0, so it'll go to where the tape head is, change that to a 0. Then we update the X with a Y, so it'll go to where the X is and update that with a Y. And then it will go back and it will move this tape head left and take the mark off that symbol and put it on that symbol. It will move this tape left, so it will uh, take the mark off this one and put it on the cell that contains a zero. And finally, it will move this tape head to the right and it will move this mark. So it may take a number of different states in our single tape Turing machine to implement this single transition. And it may take quite a few steps of the execution to perform what can be done in a single transition on the multi-tape machine, but uh, we can still do the work and follow the simulation through. Now, one thing we might want to add is these tapes are infinite with blanks assumed, so when one of these tape heads moves to the right off the end, we need to take care of that. So whenever one tape head moves off the right end, we've got to shift our tape and insert a blank. So even though there are no blanks there, we need to make sure the tape head sees a blank. So if the tape head is at the right end, tries to move to the right, then we need to shift tape 2 and tape 3 over so that we can insert a new symbol into an open cell right between the B and the pound sign.